scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Lift your hands, lift your voices in one minute and let's just ask the Lord to grant us the grace for revelation tonight. Go ahead and pray all who are following from around the world. Make sure you pray in one minute. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong. Ask the Lord for the spirit of revelation afresh again. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Hallelujah. We do the things that we do and just like Pastor Dele shared here, this is all about the purposes of the kingdom. I think it's important that we continue to emphasize this. This is not about fame. This is not about um, just honoring a conference. This is about a sincere desire to be active contributors to kingdom come. Someday if Christ tarries, whether we like it or not, there will be a transition and we'll hand over these truths to a generation. And so our assignment is to be diligent. Many ran with this baton and they gave it to us faithfully. Now, many of us had the gods to criticize them and now we are the ones at the sage. We have to trust God for grace to run sincerely, to run with perseverance, the Bible says, the race that is set before us. Hallelujah. Before we sit, let me just, I promise that we'll, I will just recommend a few books. Is, am, I, am I okay? Um, there are so many books that are available for the growth of the believer, but um, I just thought to bring two or three. Number one, Apostles, Prophets, and the Coming Moves of God. Apostles, Prophets, and the Coming Moves of God by Dr. Bill Hammond. One of the last of these veterans of the gospel standing. Our fathers are transiting with such speed. In the last one year, these men and women of God uh, have joined the cloud of witnesses. This is a call for greater tenacity even as we 
we get to the end of the age. Apostles, prophets, and the coming moves of God. Dr. Bill Hammond. Number two, fasting and prayer, the atomic power with God. This was the book that birthed the Pentecostal charismatic movement. Reverend Franklin Hall. It was a book that I was introduced to by Pastor David Ubueli. Very powerful book. I read it in one sitting. Fasting and prayer, the atomic power with God. Reverend Franklin Hall. Next, also on fasting, the key to releasing God's power in your life. This is by Derek Prince. I'm not really talking about fasting this night. Just, I just thought that is needed. And then this one I had to, this is my copy, sadly, but by the grace of God, um, they saw it all. This is by Gordon Lindsay. Many of you know about Gordon Lindsay, Christ for the Nations. Now, the way he started ministry is very interesting. He spent a major part of his life supporting other ministries and other um, mission works all across the globe. So he had a very rich heritage of vast experience across several ministries before he started Christ for the Nations. They saw it happen. This is a dramatic story of those who were greatly used in the Pentecostal outpouring of the 21st century, the 20th century. Gordon Lindsay, I'm sure that there will be a way of getting these books, making them available. The Bible says, buy the truth. When oil was finished, he said, go to them that sell. There are people apportioned with the grace to sell. Buy the truth, sell it not. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's do well to get these books. Um, personally, because I was greatly mentored by Dr. Miles Munro, I would recommend any of his books on the kingdom. He has provided one of the most balanced approach to kingdom living and understanding the kingdom from rediscovering the kingdom and um, so on and so forth. So his concepts are very, very powerful. And then there are so many, I, I don't want to now just begin to mention names but at least it's important that we get some of these books and then revive the culture of study revive in the name of jesus and in the name of honesty the culture of study i think respectfully speaking maybe that may be my first charge before we sit down um i say this with every sense of passion and every sense of responsibility something is gradually happening to our our desire to study the bible or our faith work is not just a spiritual work alone our minds must be actively involved in kingdom come it's a study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needs not to be ashamed he says rightly dividing the word hallelujah the assignment of the god of this world according to scripture is to blind their minds not just their eyes Ephesians 4 and verse 18 says, having their understanding darkened. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Hallelujah. It's very, very important. We must trust God for grace to be students of scripture. Father, be glorified tonight again in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. God bless you. Pastor Dele again, thank you. It's an honor. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you. So let's look at our, our course curriculum again. We started yesterday by considering the assignment. I pray and I hope that I was able to touch it um, enough to inspire our hunger, to look at the mandate, the ecclesia, understanding what our corporate mandate is to reveal Jesus and to bring glory to glorify the same and then this morning we looked at doctrine please in the name of jesus study on this doctrine doctrine um, will remain the hope of our remaining in the patterns of god like pastor Dele shared 
we cannot begin to invent pathways arbitrarily even though Paul saw Jesus Jesus still referred him back to the church for his growth and his development so his encounter with Jesus did not stop him from going to learn he still spent many years about 18 19 in the wilderness of Arabia are we together and so we'll look very briefly at the coming move of God it's a prophetic teaching it will be very brief I may not be as vast as I would have wanted to be but then I want us to find somewhere to pray the coming move of God ladies and gentlemen let me sound an alarm that has not been sounded for a very long time Jesus is coming let's start like that this night you will be surprised that what I'm saying should not be strange in the body of Christ can you shout it with me say Jesus is coming I assure you this is true many people do not believe that this is um, this is a reality that will happen again why because of the time lag this is a statement that was said by many people they serve the Lord they went to be with the Lord and all kinds of doctrines as it were are beginning to come up to say no I don't think that's exactly what the Bible meant one of the pillars remember our teaching in the morning for those of you who were part of it we have certain foundational pillars that make the Christian faith no matter where and what we agree or disagree on we cannot compromise on these pillars one of it is the reality of the soon coming King Jesus Christ is coming back again Acts chapter 1 from verse 9 to 11 let's look through scripture Acts chapter 1 from verse 9 it is coming back you are not a Christian hallelujah after telling them they would receive power they would be witnesses the Bible says when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight this was not a parable this actually happened are we together verse 10 and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up behold two men by them in white apparel two men stood by them in white apparel which also said ye men of Galilee and by extension the entire creation because what he says to one he says to all why stand ye gazing up into heaven please read the remaining part if you're a Christian one to read this same Jesus not another one which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven this is the integrity of scripture that Jesus will return again in the similitude the way he left how did he leave in the presence the people saw him that means he will return back and he will be seen do we agree on this scripture number two first Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13 first Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13 this this was um, Paul he was teaching to encourage the brethren particularly over the brethren who passed on to glory we call it dying now Paul calls it sleeping are we together let's consider that scripture 13 to 18 but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope verse 14 it says for if we believe that Jesus are you seeing now he now introduces one of the foundational pillars of the Christian faith as the basis of encouraging the bereaved he does not bring opinions 
oh, I think you'll be comforted, things will be all right. He said, no, 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 no. There is something, there is a foundational truth, there is a pillar that should support your confidence. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, also, them which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, hallelujah, that unto there is an event called the coming of the Lord. It says, shall not prevent them which are asleep. 16 now. It says, for the Lord himself, Paul, this man, eh, that Paul, honestly, when we get to heaven, we really need to sit with him. Because Paul had strange encounters. He was not actively part of the disciples of Jesus. But the basis of his apostolic authority is something that is worth commending. The ability to have captured these things as though he walked with Jesus, walked with the disciples. Back to that scripture, please. For the Lord himself, this is how it will happen, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And in this sequence, the dead in Christ my grandfather in Christ who served and preached until he went to be with the Lord the Bible gives me a consolation that is non-emotional according to the integrity of God's word that a day will come in the program of earth when the trump now truly if you understand this it will encourage you imagine the wonderful people some have been matired some have gone and this this atmosphere of despair suddenly you resort back to a doctrine that gives you strength and stamina that jesus will return and he's not just returning to prove he's king he's already king of kings and lord of lords his resurrection already settled that are we together? Please give us that scripture again. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, not alone, first. That honor will be given to them. And then we, when Paul was saying it, and they thought it would be so soon, so he said we, but he did not make that, that, <laughs> are we together now? I will show you why a lot of people doubt the reality of the coming of Christ. Because that expectation, the Bible says hope deferred can make the heart weary. Almost every move of God has come with advocates who said he's coming. He's coming soon. And that soon just fades away and people turn back into perdition and say don't worry about this. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, wherefore, use this doctrine to comfort one another. How many times do you hear this in a bereavement? That the authorized system of providing comfort for believers when managing the pain of those who transit is to use this assurance to say do not worry we are still a family we are only now at different planes of reality but that there will be a reunion do you believe this yes Jesus is coming back and I assure you Jesus is coming soon Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till your work on earth is done. One more time. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done let's see something apostle peter said it's a word of caution second peter please chapter three second peter chapter three 
from verse 3 watch this apostle peter now knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust verse 4 and saying where is the promise of his coming he said questioning the validity of his coming is mockery for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation verse 5 for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water 6 whereby the word that then was being overflowed with water perished but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men so there are scoffers who continue to mock these things that we do as we you need to understand this because i'm talking about the coming move of god and we'll be talking about the global harvest if we do not understand this the bible says when the spirit of truth is come that the holy spirit will convict the world of three levels of sin of righteousness and of judgment sometimes um, in a bit to not bring fear we bring the judgment part out it is part of the gospel that a day will come when they who have been given a chance to accept the lordship of jesus christ act of their own volition there will be eternal damnation it is true we cannot just talk about the promise of a good life that is important and that is true but if our hope is only in this life and in this world the bible says we are of all men most miserable the coming move of god when the lord began to teach me this mystery about the mighty manifestation of his power and his grace and that which will be demanded of the saints in the last days i was amazed as he began to show me from scripture that he has an end time agenda and let me start very quickly explaining two mysteries in the bible now maybe i should say this just by way of um, uh, putting it in context every single individual who the bible captures their experience as far as their earth work is concerned they were humans but they embodied systems from adam to abraham to moses these were not just men walking the earth are we together now yes the system of kingdom advance is such that the bodies the actors of that program may change but the program continues regardless the actors are we together so when you study by the spirit you don't just study individuals you move past the individuals to see what they represented as far as the program of god's concern and one of these mysteries one of these systems is the man that we call enoch enoch theologically speaking was the fourth man from creation please give us genesis chapter 5 the bible the seventh man i meant to say from creation enoch is a mystery i'm showing you the sequence of the the patterns as far as the coming move of god and the end time is concerned so that we understand the construct we understand the sequence and how to align ourselves the first of the programs of god across the earth is the manifestation of enoch genesis chapter 5 shila subrandi gaskubliasa hasa paruski Genesis 5 To see you high and lifted up 
shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Verse 21. My verse of emphasis is 24, but I'd like us to start from verse 21. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. Verse 22 says, And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Two more verses. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. Please go back to that scripture. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. Think again while you are reading. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. 24. He says, and Enoch walked with God to the point that he was not. That is a similitude of the rapture. Watch this. That Enoch walked to a point where his level of transformation got to a point where this earth was not worthy of. Remember the Bible tells us that there were certain men, Hebrews 11, that the earth was not worthy of. For God took him. He didn't go. God took him. He didn't say, God, I want to return home. Mm -mm. His level of work with God and transformation, he got to a point where God said, no, you deserve a higher plane of reality. Enoch. The manifestation of Enoch is one of the the activities of the spirit that foreruns the coming of Christ. Enoch is a representation of intimacy and passion for spiritual things. Enoch is a spiritual system that goes past the gate of fame, goes past the gate of ambition. Please look up. Goes past the gate of the mundane things in this life. Imagine that a man lived 365 years and all that the Bible can say about such a man is he walked with God. What a testimony that you spend your life and the most striking, the signature activity of your life was that you walked with God. And he walked with God, had children, and the children did not disrupt his walk with God. He had Methuselah, he had sons and daughters, and yet his focus remained the same. He still walked with God until he was not. The coming move of God will not just start with revivals. Uh -uh. It's a restoration of the spirit of Enoch intimacy and desire for God beyond the walls of church, beyond ministry, beyond man of God, beyond preaching, beyond visions, beyond rema. We will never be able to host what the Spirit of God is doing across the nations in this end time if our focus is just preaching and accurate exegesis of the word, as powerful as that will be, it will be a product of our work with God. That the remnant of the house of Jacob, the Bible declares, they will first bear root downwards. You don't see that activity happen, but that becomes the stability of the tree and the fruit that it produces. Enoch, the manifestation of Enoch. We see that happen with a man in the Bible called Jacob. In Genesis 28, Jacob laid down pastor in a place called Luz and the Bible says that while he slept he had a dream and he saw a ladder that connected the earth to the heavens are we together are we Bible students and angels were ascending and descending at the top of it was God himself and he began to speak to him when he was done from that vision he got up and said ah surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not it says, this is the house of God, the gate of heaven. He anointed the place 
and because he was not sensitive he was not prepared for the things that God had for him to do the next scene in his life was Laban's house he went through over 20 years of pain disappointment betrayal when that happened when we get to Genesis 32 I'm rushing for the sake of time so we can focus on that coming move of God I'm just trying to give us a preamble when we get to Genesis 32 the Spirit of God is ready to try again with Jacob but there was a price he had to push all his wives away push all his cattle away the Bible says when he was alone there is a realm in God where you don't go as us it is he there is a realm in God where you don't go as husband and wife. There is a realm where you don't go as pastor, apostle, prophet. There is a realm where you don't go as preacher, musician. Uh -uh. When he was alone, the Bible says, a man came and the wrestle began. And he said, leave me for the day breaketh. Jacob said, no, I missed it before. I know the consequence of living life and advocating a destiny without your presence. I will not let you go till you bless me. He said, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob for as a prince. You have had power with God and you have prevailed. And the Bible says he touched the hollow of his tie. This is a mystery. That means I become your completion. I have done something to you that you can never find balance without me. I have become a factor, a completer in your life. And then he blessed him. And the Bible says that he called the place Peniel and the sun arose. I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Enoch. There is so much busyness in our world. Now, respectfully speaking, conferences, conventions, church building, projects, even though they look like Christian activities, we do not know to what degree they are distracting us from aligning to this great move of God that is coming. Can I tell you this? If a major part of your life is seen and known by people, you are not truly walking with God. A major part of your life must remain behind the veil. Preaching is, should be a minute fraction of what your life is about. The pandemic forced us because there were no programs. You, didn't, you couldn't go out. Many people, including believers, became restless because they've not mastered the art of the secret, the art of the presence. It was such a burden to live without going out, without doing this, because we are used to the ritual and the religion of activities. When you study through scripture, Jesus camped with these people. They spend time with him. Remember my teaching yesterday. Our call is not unto ministry. In its purest form. Our call is unto Jesus. Follow me. Not follow an ambition. I know you will become an apostle one day. But for now. The assignment is follow me. When you follow me. There is a making. When I make you. I send you. The empowerment comes when I send you. Not when I'm making you. Are we together? Enoch. Enoch is the spirit of intimacy, hunger, genuine holiness and passion, consecration, a pursuit for spiritual things. The average man of God, because of the pressure that society, I, I may not blame it sincerely on ministers, but the pressure that society brings to have to make full proof of your ministry puts pressure on us and we would rather that our spiritual lives die and let the church move forward are we together now the bible talks about the first miracle of jesus there was a message there the wedding in cana cana of galilee the bible says there was a feast and in that feast jesus was there but he was not honored he was there churches were being built but Jesus was no longer the center many things were happening but Jesus was no longer the center there were rulers and the Bible makes a very dangerous statement and the wine finished yet activities were still happening but the wine had finished 
it took a few people to discern that something is wrong with the formation of this feast and then Mary who was representing the ministry of the Holy Spirit led them to Jesus and Jesus go and do your thing do your ministry the way you are doing they said no we are not confused in the midst of this feast even though you are not honored we know and he said okay if you have recognized me this will be the formula start with water it has to be water before wine leave wine use this jar six the number of man fill it with water there needs to be that purification are we together now that once you get that water whilst you are going with water out of that water it will start turning to wine if it is God it starts with water before it becomes wine are we blessed the pandemic gave me an opportunity to seek the Lord and to press him for him with all my heart like never before it was such a luxury I did not realize how busy my life was now I say this with all humility it's an honor to serve the body but careful we are not Jesus Christ we are only advocating him it was not your face that was on that crucifix so you have to be be to serve the body and do all of these things is amazing how many times we forget and we ignore the reality of the secret place and you know what while you are dying people still keep clapping apostle joshua selman be careful men can clap you to a point where you lose out on the program of god that god used you yesterday does not guarantee he will use you tomorrow there are standards all the time our fathers have taught us just because you were used yesterday does not guarantee that you'll be used tomorrow I've cried unto God so many times. I said I would give up ministry a thousand times, Pastor Daly. And I mean it from my heart. I'm not just preaching. Oh, away with ministry. I will shut it down a thousand times to preserve his presence. That's where he started with us. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Not preaching. Oh Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Ah, that's the spirit of Enoch. Hunger for encounters. That Jesus, you're the center. And everything revolves around you. Jesus from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you can I tell you this this is always the formula the church history in Nigeria most of those who were used by God did not want to be used. They were just people who just, there was a hunger and a go to the forest. They were not looking for anything. Lord, more of you, more of your glory. That's all I want. There are several levels of the will of God. There is the predeterminate counsel of God. But there is a way a man can push himself into the current will of God through the sacrifice of alignment. Meaning the script of your destiny did not capture that role. But you so align, you are so available, God cannot deny your presence. An example was Elisha. Elisha was never supposed to be a prophet. The next prophet was to come among the sons of the prophet. But he aligned himself. He sold everything. There's something that hunger and sacrifice God does to God. Genuine pursuit. There is nobody who is immune to the temptation of a mundane life. Shut your eyes. Shut your phone, shut everything and say, Lord, this is about you. I've prayed and cried many times to God that anything that sustains the ability
ability to take your place in my life. I'm praying it in advance. May it never come to my life, number one. And number two, may it never be able to take your place in my life. The coming move of God is not, an, is not a manifestation of celebrities. No, celebrity Christianity is going to die a permanent death in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. John said, when the disciples of John came and said, someone just came to town and he's outshining you. John, are you not aware? Won't you fight for your right? John said, it's correct. I must decrease. Mm. I must decrease. The more people see you, forgetting about you while they are looking at you, the proof you are yielded, the more they see you, they should see him in you. That's If they keep remembering you, it's a proof that you are alive in the flesh. Are we together? It's been my advocacy. I never started out. I, I will never, it will hire me to share this. That when I start there are many things I never knew they used to give if already in ministry that you actually preach and people bless you. I will almost run away. Will I be able to sleep? It was a derivative of a genuine passion genuine passion I have studied the history of revivals a bit by the great and tell you most people who God really called they ran away they didn't want the stage they wanted him they wanted him they, they hungered and they sought his face so much and he found in them vessels, vessels of power, vessels of grace. So the sequence is not Rema. The sequence is not revelation. The sequence is not gifts and celebrities. The sequence is first a retreat. We will advance by retreating. We will have to go back and say, Lord, this is about you now. I'm speaking to men and women of God. I'm speaking to people want, who want to be featured in the program of God. Believe me, the appetite for a celebrity man of God will only land us in destruction. We must go back and know how to hold the four horns of the altar. The Lord, if my life will be like Anna the prophetess and no one will see me, so be it. Provided you are glorified in and through my life. Are we together now? Please take it higher for me. There's a song that captures, I, I write a lot of songs, I, be, I, I receive a lot of songs that have to do with intimacy and hunger and passion. Not because I'm a man of God, because I have found out in scripture that every time God wants to use men, his first assignment is to call them to himself. Please don't forget this. Moses, you cannot go to Pharaoh the way you are. Your first call is to the burning bush. Interact with his majesty first. Leave Pharaoh behind. I will send you. Moses was so wise. He said, go to Pharaoh. Moses said, who shall I tell Pharaoh had sent me? I cannot advocate over a God I do not know. Pharaoh will ask me questions. Who sent you? This is the question that most people have not been able to answer. We fail to answer it in mission fields. We fail to answer it through church projects. Because whoever sent you is the one who backs you. Who sent you? Can you take it high? My voice, forgive me. You have my everything. You've heard that song? You have my everything. We were in a meeting many years ago, and it was it was a meeting 
that was just drawing out every flesh to just die to say Lord this is not I, I think those kinds of meetings must be revived in the body of Christ it's not just that you invite someone and come and sit down and hear someone lead you and no there are times where we just come and lie before his majesty we cast our crowns no matter what the achievement is roll from pillar to post and cry before him and say Lord search my heart try my thoughts if there be any wicked way in me lead me to the way everlasting it is that state of brokenness and contriteness of heart he says a broken spirit thou O God will not despise Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I give my everything you have my everything say take all of me all of me Lord the Bible says I beseech thee brethren Apostle Paul is teaching now by the message of God Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 I beseech thee brethren by the message of God that ye offer your bodies, not just your spirits, your bodies, as a living sacrifice, he says, holy and acceptable. He calls it your reasonable act of worship. In fact, the Bible says to offer unto him the calves of our lips. Genuine surrender. To get saved, you don't need to give your life to Jesus. You need to receive his life but to be used withhold it many of them are around different prayer groups scattered across this nation men and women some of them do not feel qualified in themselves some of them do not even know that those groups were the birthing of the spirit oh it may not be the Joshua Selmans I assure you there are many others Elijah, you are not the only one. There are 7,000 others under the custody of Obadiah who have not yet bowed to Baal. The spirit of Enoch, the grace for communion. It says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship, the koinonia, the participation of the spirit. Let it tabernacle be with you. we must return the pattern that hosts God in the beginning God it is a non-negotiable formula not in the beginning ministry not in the beginning tongues not in the beginning power not in the beginning fasting not in the beginning prayer they are wonderful but the sequence of our pursuit must be God not even kingdom God can still kill if God is not above them God can give you something that will fight him he must be exalted and enthroned Lord of all are we still together please pay attention to this Pastor Dele this is the reason why so many people fall in the wayside because whatever motivated you into ministry is what will sustain you whilst you are there if you want a career some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears it was never about money it was never about the mic it was never about membership dear Lord it was about your presence my hunger I thank God for the blessings and the privilege of an encounter with Jesus but if I never met him I will still be grateful in life and in death this is the spirit that will bring back Christ we need to respectfully go back to edit a lot of things we are doing in the body of Christ 
It is the reason why we do not see his power. Gideon cried and said, why do we not see these powers again? There has to be a restoration of genuine intimacy with God. Gone are the days where people can shut their doors and you call them, they say, I'm having time with God. Right now, when you call someone and say, I'm having time, he said, you want to die of hunger? Whoever told us the presence of God brings men down. Whoever told us this is the reason why there are certain things we don't hear again. January is a very strategic time in the body of Christ. We have people fasting and many times fasting religiously just for 10 days, 30 days or whatever and we finish and we don't know to what end. Most of the fast, respectfully speaking, is just need driven. I was told if I fast, I can get a job. Wonderful, but it's more than that. For they don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. You are the reason I leave. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. You are the reason I leave. You're the one for me. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all. Search me through and through my heart becomes a man live for 365 years and all that the Bible says about that man is an inward. Yet he wrote a book and the Bible does not even talk about the book he wrote and dwells so much in it. A testament seventh man from creation who taught him the value of God's presence. Listen to me. Truly speaking, I pray, I pray for us in the studio and for as many who are following. For someone, this is a message as to why things may not be working around your life and ministry. Because your focus is on your ego. You think it's on the ministry, but it's on your reputation. It's an attempt to show this thing is working. Till my heart becomes a home. Be magnified, O oh Lord. You are highly exalted. And there is nothing you can't do. this testimony with my life that if Christ tarries at the end of my life let it not be how many people were healed thank God for all of those things not how many houses you bought not how many cars you bought MOG not how many conferences you attended the testimony of Enoch and Joshua Selman 
walked with God. It's a testimony that our mundane pursuit will not give us the wisdom to see, to discern, and to appreciate. It is the noblest testimony that can be given for any man. Walked with God. If your presence will not go with me, do not send me. What am I doing? If your presence will not go with me, let the conference end. I'm not too embarrassed to stop it. If your, comfort, if your presence will not go with me, if my passion for you will suffer because of ministry, let the ministry go away. Do you have the courage to drive every other thing in your life? Abraham, take now thy son whom thou lovest and offer him. This is the price to host God. Everything that represents your value and worth must die at that altar. The price for life is death. Only dead men can carry God. Only dead men will be able to advance the frontiers of the kingdom in this end time. Am I boring you? This is very serious. Our fathers in this nation, many of them who spearheaded the revival, they were not very educated. But my goodness, they had hunger. How did the prayer camp start that we now build? Those prayer camps were not built out of ambition. They were built out of a desire to have a place. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. They wanted a, a place away from every noise. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live to worship you. That's what drove them to turn forest into campgrounds. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, oh, oh, oh. See la parushka la da di ada. not seeking the face of God that made men like Apostle Babalola to pray and they had encounters, they prayed and water came out of the rock that we still consume today. It was not an ambition. It was something that, it was a product of hunger. Don't downplay the miracles that can come out of a place of intimacy. If the intimacy between wife can produce another life, what can the intimacy between you and God produce? I'm not talking of two people who are born again. A man and his wife who are not born again and simply because they paid the price of intimacy, a life can come out of it. Not just joy. Not just a relationship. You claim you are his bride. First show me your pregnancy. The proof of the intimacy. And show me the children that have come as proof that you are a faithful bride. Was it not the rebellion of Vashti that drove her away from becoming queen? Esther knew this. That I'm only queen because I married the king. My focus is not the palace. I have an agenda. Her man wants to destroy the people. But it does not start by advocating an agenda. It is all about the king first. That was a strategy. The book of Esther is a prophetic book. A woman was used by God. Her man wanted to annihilate the Jews. The spirit of the Antichrist was at work in him. And for Esther to do that, if she had God, because you see, a man had built a relationship with Ahasuerus that would not be easily destroyed, not even because of a woman. She had to use her worship and her relationship to win the heart of Ahasuerus. I show you the protocol of intimacy. It starts with him, not it. King Ahasuerus, she came to him. He lifted up the golden censer. What do you want? He said, I want to do something that flaunts your glory. I want to set up a party for you. Wow, this is what I wanted Vashti to do. She built a camp for herself and forgot she was only queen because she married the king. I bring you a prophetic word of caution. 
whole body of Christ. Let us be careful lest we make the mistake of Vashti. For the things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. That hope that does not make us shame. Vashti began to run her own program. When the king sent for her, she forgot that she was in the palace only because of him. So when Esther came, she came not forgetting where she was coming from. Her goal was to save the Jews, but it started with the king. Don't forget, her goal was to save the Jews, but it started with the king. She organized the feast. The king was so happy, he said, do it again. Until he got to a feast that the Bible calls the feast of wines. There is something about wine. <laughs> That's not where I'm going to this night, but I, I've done a teaching on it already. And she came to the king and spoke about Haman. And the king went to his garden to think the relationship I have built with Haman, would I let it just get destroyed? And he came out and saw Haman begging her and thought he wanted to rape his wife. He said, that's it. I found what I'm looking for. Do you know how many things, many requests that we pray for were supposed to be answered through the mystery of intimacy? That if we spent time with God, we would not have to pray those things. I assure you. Most of our fathers who had them did not even know they needed them. They just knew they needed God. They didn't know they needed the grace for prophecy, the grace for visions. All they wanted was God. Even when they were wrong, let me be wrong in his presence. Samuel slept, but he slept close to the ark. It's safer to sleep, even if you will sleep, sleep near the ark. You know, sometimes when you are attending videos, people are sleeping. And sometimes when you are tired of waking them up, you find consolation that they are sleeping close to the ark. It's safer and better. <laughs> are we blessed? Let's rush. You won't believe that. Oh, dear. Number two, the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of prayer and supplication. Now, watch this. The Bible tells us that it was at a time when the prophets of Baal seemed to be reigning over the territory and the prophets of God had to go in hiding. Why? Because of a spiritual system that was antagonistic to God's program captured in a woman called Jezebel. Are we together now? That Jezebel was an extension of a spiritual system that is antichrist. It's carried many names. Babylon, Jezebel. Now, Jezebel is a spirit that cannot be activated until she's connected to government because the character of the spirit of the Antichrist is that it wants government, the place of influence and authority. So now Jezebel is married to Ahab. Are we together now? And the prophets of Baal are excelling under her leadership. Suddenly, this man shows up. This spiritual system called Elijah the Tishbite. And the Bible tells us that Elijah is not just a person. Elijah is a spiritual system that foreruns the move of God. Every time God is about to show up in a territory, Elijah must precede him. Elijah is a prophetic and apostolic system that is mandated with several assignments. Number one, to restore the patterns and the ordinances of God. Every time there is decadence within a territory, the spirit of Elijah is required within that territory mandated with the assignment to call men back through genuine repentance to rebuild the altars of God again. Are we together? Before the great and the terrible day of the Lord, Malachi said that Elijah will come again. When Jesus was about to show up, Elijah came again in the person, the spirit and the power of Elijah, John. John the prophet, who we call the Baptist. I think I shared it on this platform if I remember that John was not a Baptist John was a prophet in fact he was a witness through prophecy 
Are we together? Baptism was a strategy to help him identify the Christ. So every, a formula was given to him during his time of training. That every time you dip them in water, keep looking up. When you dip, you look up and say, be on your way. This, these wicked guys came to distract him. Because the spirit of the Antichrist kept searching for that seed that will bruise the head of the serpent. And they suspected, it tells you Satan is not as accurate as we have give, we've given him a lot of credit. Moses grew up in the same palace at the center of wizardry and yet the eye of witchcraft could not see him. Are we together? So he kept baptizing and then he saw this young man, 30 years old. For 18 years thereabout he had disappeared. We don't know what happened. From age 12, the Bible is silent about him. The next time we see him, he's 30 years old coming to be baptized and John said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world he says I'm not worthy to untouch to untie even the latchet of your shoe and Jesus said suffer it to be so now we're dealing with patterns now suffer it to be so that scripture will be fulfilled when he dipped John in water John came out and your Bible says and the heavens opened they saw the Holy Spirit coming in the similitude of a dove and the father now spoke. This is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Jesus then began his ministry. John got it right. But I wish we had time. We would have learned a lesson from the latter years of John. It was John who ordained Jesus to ministry. But you see, the pain of giving all to God, if you don't die completely, the remaining part of you that is alive will destroy the remaining part of you. See, there were times when God would tell them, destroy everything in a land, kill there is, whatever you leave else, it will still grow. John said, I must decrease. It was not enough to decrease. The assignment was to die. John decreased, but there was still something in him that was alive. And that something began to grow. And he said, go and tell Jesus, are you the Messiah? John, what suddenly happened to you? Did you forget the memory of your ordination? This is just about three years. John, who ordained Jesus to ministry, now became offended. Listen, it is wonderful to decrease, but the assignment is death. It's risky to decrease alone. Because things will happen that will resurrect things that have been dead or that were there but did not die. Are we together now? Yes. He was angry and he sent his disciples. How come Jesus is not even concerned? I'm in prison here. And the disciples came to Jesus. And Jesus began to heal. He blessed people, healed. And he said, go and tell John what you have seen. He said, happy is he who is not offended in me. John, I know the problem. You are not acting out of ignorance. There is something you are saying. You send those messengers with something else. I get the message. Lord, I served you for 30 years and I do not even have a branch to myself. Make sure you die. Don't just decrease. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.